Hi folks, uh, today we'll be talking about debugging features that ReSharper adds to Visual Studio. Um, Visual Studio already has a great debugger experience, but with ReSharper, we can take it to the next level. So today we have this console application for my unicorn startup. Uh, it, it tracks all the most important people on the planet. Uh, obviously I'm first, um, I'm just kidding. But um, in this list, you'll actually see ReSharper noticing c -sharp 9 features as well. So we have inline hints um, from c -sharp 9. So person is actually just an inline, in, inlay hint uh, from ReSharper. But something is wrong with my console application here. So I've set some debug breakpoints uh, and let's just start our console application. One of the first features we're going to notice that ReSharper adds to our debugging experience inside of Visual Studio is these inlay adornments, as we call them here at JetBrains. Uh, you can see uh, our uh, console arguments are here. There are no arguments right now. And we can actually see the inlay hints for our uh, list of person. Uh, if we click these, we can actually see all of the elements inside of our list, um, we actually notice something strange is happening here. Uh, this is not matching the properties on our person. Uh, another cool thing is this will stay up as long as you don't actually click anywhere, or you can just hit the escape key and that will close it. But if we go back, we can see, hey, something is strange here. If we jump to if we jump to the person model using ReSharper's um, search tool, we can actually see that ReSharper's uh, inlay adornments, uh, debugger adornments, uh, is using our debugger display attribute that we've uh, decorated our person class with. So here we're actually generating a string and using the property name in the debugger display. So if we were to go back to our program, you can actually see that that's what's happening here. If we don't like what's happening with the debugger display, we can actually click and we can say highlight property. And what that will do is next time we go in, we'll actually see the properties that are highlighted. So we have a few options when we're talking about these adornments, uh, especially during the debugging experience. We've also seen kind of how data tips work. This is what these things are called when you click in. We call these things data tips and you can kind of hover over any variable as we kind of step through. So we have these breakpoints. Let's go ahead and step through. And you can see immediately ReSharper will actually update these adornments, which is kind of nice especially from my point of view, because I no longer have to kind of hunt and peck through my autos, through my locals, through my watch windows to find exactly where that value is um, being evaluated. So that's really nice. That can really speed up your debugger experience. Um, but you might notice in this file, we actually have a lot of breakpoints. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop debugging my console application. We have a few breakpoints and it kind of be confusing. Uh, one of the shortcut keys that I really like to use is Control Alt F9. And that will actually bring up ReSharper's breakpoint search menu. What you see here is all the breakpoints across my solution. The other nice thing about this view is um, we can actually see where the breakpoint is and a preview of the line um, that has the breakpoint set. Additionally, too, on the left, we actually see if the breakpoint is enabled, if the breakpoint has um, you know, a condition that needs to be met, or if um, the breakpoint is just completely disabled. From this menu, too, we can search by typing. You can see you know, 
we can find them that way. Additionally, too, we can say look for code, which is really nice. And finally, if we realize, hey, this, this breakpoint isn't something we actually want, we can just go ahead, oops, go down to that breakpoint and just go ahead and delete it. As you can see, the breakpoint was actually on this line and now it's gone, which is really great. Going back to the breakpoint window, we can actually use this little icon up here. By clicking it, we bring up ReSharper's breakpoints window, not to be confused with Visual Studio's breakpoint window. Um, just bringing them up side by side, this is Visual Studio's breakpoint window. Um, it's, it's workable, but there's a little quality of life improvements in the ReSharper breakpoints window. You can do things like group by project, by class, uh, and we can actually change those things up here. So you can say no um, grouping, you can group by file, directory and file, and project and structure. So um, let's close this. So that's the ReSharper breakpoint window. Um, like other things, you can also you know, type to search. So if we wanted to find, um, you know, we can um, filter things by our search criteria, which is really nice. And you can also um, enable and disable breakpoints here by right-clicking. Uh, as you may have noticed, when you actually click a breakpoint, you see the preview code here on the right, which is really nice because uh, sometimes we set breakpoints on lines that don't necessarily have a lot of value to those lines. Uh, this curly and ending curly brace here on this for each loop um, might not actually give us a hint as to what's happening. So this preview window brings us to the code and now we can see, ah, oh, yes, uh, we're actually setting a breakpoint at the end of this for each loop. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the debugging experience again because I want to show you something that's really special to me at least. Um, when you're debugging, uh, there are times where you might actually get a third party dependency um, that maybe you didn't get the PDBs to, the um, portable debugging uh, files. Uh, in this case, our um, console application actually has an assembly reference to this black box library. Um, this black box company is very, very secretive and doesn't want you to know what it does, but they want you to use their software. And as we step through, actually, let's just go ahead and run to this file or to this line. Okay, let's disable this. So we've hit this black box calculator. We'll notice something when we look at this line and we use ReSharper's decompiler, we can see that this breakpoint cannot actually be set because we don't have the PDBs. So we've decompiled this using ReSharper's decompiler and we could try to set a breakpoint, but it just doesn't necessarily work. Um, if we were to go down to the modules window, we can actually see what symbols have been loaded. And you can see right now, here's black box, the symbols have actually not been loaded so we can't actually debug this, uh, or that's what we think. Using ReSharper, we can actually load the symbols by using the ReSharper decompiler. So here we go. We can load symbols, and now we've loaded the symbols. And if we go back, we can actually see that this breakpoint is enabled. So uh, if we go back to the program, just hit continue, hey, we've hit our black box code. Uh, as you can see, this uh, secretive company has accidentally added first twice to the second argument, and it's actually causing a bug. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about what ReSharper brings to the debugging experience in Visual Studio. Um, and as you can see, 
with in combination with the decompiler, um, your debugging experience can go beyond even your code. So thanks for watching and catch you next time.